This conference will now be recorded. Hello students, I'm Dr. Divya from T9 Stein. 13th chapter, Organisms and Population, part 8. This is the last part. In this last class, we were discussing about population interactions. Uh, so we know that for any species, any species, the minimum requirement, minimum whatever may be, the minimum requirement is its food, right? So for that, for feeding, there will be another species. We can't say that on earth only single species is living and it's not possible also. For food, or for the minimum requirement, there will be other species So for any species, the minimum requirement is one more species on which it can feed. Even plant species also, they also cannot survive alone. Then, you know that plants, they are depending upon animals for their pollination and all, right? So in nature, plants or microbes, water, maybe these organisms, they cannot occur in an isolated way. So they interact. There will be an interaction between all these organisms and they form a biological community. So this type of interaction where two or more species, they interact with each other. It is called as interspecific interactions. Interactions between organisms of different species. That is called as interspecific interaction. So uh, this type of interspecific interaction, they are of different types. We have already discussed all these things. That may be, these interactions may be beneficial. That means positive interaction or detrimental, that means negative interaction. Then neutral, there won't be any harm or any benefit, neither harm or no beneficial. So this type of interaction is also there. This benefit may be for one species or for both species, they may get benefited. So there are different types of interactions, okay? So this interspecific interactions, that population interactions, they are of different types, beneficial, detrimental, or neutral. So here, the name of different interactions we have given, mutualism, competition, predation, parasitism, commensalism, then amensalism. So these are different types of interactions. So this is very important, different types of interaction. You may get questions from this part, even for descriptive type also, with example. So that example, that may ask for neat exam. As MCQ also you will get. Then if you are writing about this type of interactions, even it is a descriptive type, first you need to write the interaction, which type of interaction it is or how it is. Or how the species or how the organisms of different species they are getting interacted. Either it is getting benefited or not. Like that you need to mention with example. Every time you should mention with example. Then uh, let us see one by one. In mutualism, one species is getting benefited sorry, both the species, both are getting benefited, species A and species B, both are getting benefited in mutualism. Okay, next competition. Competition in the sense, both, both species, they are getting 
they are competing for something it may be for food or shelter or whatever may be that both species they are getting a kind of competition means there is no benefit in both next is predation in predation one is getting benefited and another one the species a it is getting beneficial interaction that in that interaction the first species species a is getting benefited but species b is not getting any benefit that is predation okay i'll explain everything in detail next is parasitism same like predation parasitism also parasitism while explaining the example you will get an idea in that also species a one species is getting benefited and another species that don't have any benefit next type is commensalism in commensalism one species is getting benefited at the same time that species b or the second species that is neither getting any benefit no any harm okay that is a neutral condition there is no benefit no harm that is commensalism one species but one species is getting benefited but the other species the second species which is interacting with the first species the second species is neither getting any harm no any benefit okay so there is no harm no benefit in the case of second species at the same time the first species or species a is getting benefited in the case of commensalism then last one amensalism in amensalism uh, there is no benefit or is a, or there is a negative effect got it negative effect in the species a but there is no benefit no harm in species b let us check one by one the first type is mutualism mutualism means both both the species both are getting benefited so that is the kind of obligate association means both are getting benefited where these two organisms they are living together and they cannot live separately okay they are living together but they cannot live separately and the examples while explaining with the examples we can understand in clan and fungal mutualism this means like as we have learned in 11th standard that is a very good example for mutualism lichens means that is a relation between fungus fungus and photosynthesizing green algae or cyanobacteria got it blue green algae so this algae that is called as phycobiome that will produce food through photosynthesis at the same time that mycobiome that is the fungal part that will absorb nutrients from the soil so in the case of lichen algal part that will produce food through photosynthesis at the same time fungus the fungal part or the mycobiome that is absorbing nutrients from the soil got it so that is a very good example for mutualism and next is mycorrhizae this is also we have learned this example also and this is a mutualistic relationship which one mycorrhizae and in this fungus and higher plants root okay root roots of higher plant and fungus the relation between both so in this that fungal part that is absorbing essential nutrients from the soil and the plant what that plant is doing that is providing energy to that fungal part means that is synthesizing food or that is providing carbohydrate to that fungal part 
So that is mycorrhiza. Both lichen and mycorrhiza, both are the examples for which one? Mutualism. Next, another example is plant and animal mutualism. So in this, This plants, plants, they are taking help, help of animals for their pollination, flower pollination and for their seed dispersal also. So in this, that plant, how it is getting benefited in the form of pollen and nectar for that pollinators. And for seed dispersal in that time, how they'll get? They'll get nutritious food or fruits that is considered as a nutritive food or nu that nutritious fruit. And after that, it, after eating that, it is dispersing the seed, right? So plant-animal interaction that involves co-evolution, co-evolution of both the species okay that co-evolution that means in that mechanism a biological object that is getting changed or that is triggered by the change of the related species or that related object so that evolution In this plant animal mutualism, in this we can see the evolution of flower and the pollinators, pollinator species which is helping for the pollination. So that evolution we can learn, we can study, we can see several examples for that. Pig and pig wasp. There is a tight relationship between these pollinator species and these fig trees. That means uh, that fig species in a particular fig species you can see uh, there is a wasp species also and without that wasp group that pollination, pollination is impossible or it, it cannot occur. So this female was that is using this pig fruit for what? Egg laying. For egg laying, that female was is using this pig fruit. So that is the sign for oviposition. And that seeds it is used for nourishment of this larvae also. Then the vast pollen, uh, that one, that is while uh, egg lay, for that purpose it is going there, right? So that time what it is doing, this was it is pollinating the fig in fluorescent and it is searching a suitable place for the egg lay. So that time while searching, while going through that inflorescence, it is pollinating. It is working as a pollinating agent in the fig inflorescence. Okay. So that is the, here, these are now simple examples, but you should know for which one or which type of interaction this fig and fig was. You are placing this as a examples. So there comes the confusion. We have to learn mutualism from the word itself. It's clear. We used to say that there is a mutual understanding. Right? So in the same way, mutualism means both are getting benefited. One is getting side for egg laying. At the same time, with the same time it is getting or it is helping for the pollination. Right, both are getting benefited. So, like that, each one, each type of interaction you should note down with examples. 
okay without example you should not explain this because it will become incomplete with example if you are writing means you will get full marks so here mutual relationship between fig tree and was the fig flower it is pollinated by that was and was is laying egg in the fig tree that is the position for egg laying next is another example for mutualism is orchid orchid and bees so in that case to ensure that guaranteed pollination orchids have different floral patterns they are showing a variety of floral patterns diversity in the floral pattern to ensure the pollination so based on that it is attracting the pollinator insects or the bees which are getting attracted it is based on the floral pattern there are diversity number of floral patterns in the case of orchids see in the case of fig that insects which are coming for pollination they are getting benefited right but in the case of orchids they cannot ensure that kind of rewards okay so for example that mediterranean orchid uh the mediterranean orchid offers that employs sexual deceit for what to get pollination done by the particular species of bee so one petal of that flower one petal in that orchid flower one petal of that flower that will be having that will be having that uncanny that is resembling to that female bee female bee of that particular group it it will be resembling that color or markings almost it will be similar got it so that male bee what it will think that male bee will that male bee that perceives a male bee is thinking it as a female and it is getting dusted with pollen from which flower it will be from the flower and during that process of pseudo copulation that pollen grains are getting dusted because that male bee is thinking this is the female one actually that is a floral pattern okay so like that it is getting benefited that when that same bee it is pseudo copulating with another flower that is transferring the pollen to it and that's how the flowers are getting pollinated so in this case orchid and bee the pollination it depends upon the floral pattern because it is uh, resembling uh, that there is a resemblance like that female bee in the floral pattern diversity of floral pattern that helps in the pollination here in the case of orchid and bee but here here the negative side is there is a coevolution process in this right the floral pattern should be similar then only that male bee can understand this is the female bee actually it is not the female bee it is the floral pattern of that orchid but if the female bee is changing its color pattern just imagine there is a slight color change in the color pattern or in, or uh, 
something like there is a change in the appearance of that female bee then that pollination success of that pollination that percentage also will get reduced right because what that flower there is a co evolution for what to maintain that resemblance of the pet to that female bee right that female bee and that petal both should be having the both should have the similar appearance otherwise their that pollination is not possible the male bee won't come towards that right so in the case of orchid we can say like that then here here you can see this is the mutual relationship between fig tree and wasp so that fig flower it is pollinated by that wasp and wasp is laying egg in the fig fruit next is commensalism next type is commensalism in this one species is getting benefited but the other species it is neither harmed nor benefited there is no harm or no benefit in the case of commensalism one only one species is getting benefited and another species is neither harmed nor benefited so the species which is benefited it is termed or it is called as commensal and the other species that is called as host okay the benefited species is called as commensal and the other species is called as other species is called as host so the commensalism in different types of animals we can observe even in plants also we can see so uh, we need to learn with example orchids epiphytes which are growing on other plants like mango here orchids you know that some kind of orchids they are going uh, they, they are growing on mango trees so that host so that epiphyte growing on plants like mango they are getting benefited in the form of shelter but that host think about that host whether it is getting any benefit no that host is neither getting any benefit no getting harm okay so orchids which are living on mango tree that orchids are getting they are getting benefited but the mango tree it is neither getting benefited nor harmed then barnacles which are growing on back of whales again in the same thing is happening here also they they are getting shelter but for whale nothing there is no special effect for whale but barnacles they are growing on the back of a whale it is getting benefited as a shelter it is getting benefit next uh clownfish this clownfish which is living among a uh, sea animal they are getting protection from predators because they stay away from this uh, tentacles which is stinging that stinging tentacles of sea animal so they they are getting protection from the predators okay next so these are the examples for commensalism 
Next comes competition. Another population interaction. This is competition. So competition, uh, in broad sense, we can say that interaction of two organisms. But both the organisms, they are competing for the same resource. So the competition among that individuals of same species for one or more common resource. That is called as intraspecific competition. And uh, between the organism of different species, that is called as different species are getting competed. Okay. Organisms of different species, competition between those, that is called as interspecific competition. But intraspecific competition, that is more powerful or that is creating more issues. Why intraspecific competition is creating problem? Because intraspecific means within that species, right? In one species, competition between organisms. So that organisms will be, definitely they will be competing for the same requirements. Like food, they want space, they want water, light or shelter, whatever may be. Within that same group, organisms are competing means they will be competing for the same resource, right? So here comes Darwin's struggle for existence and survival of the fittest in nature, right? So this competition, we can see this competition in two forms. Competitive ex exclusion and competitive coexistence. Okay, so competitive exclusion and competitive coexistence. So in competitive exclusion, this is goes competitive exclusion principle in that we can say that two closely related species which are competing for same resource they cannot coexist indefinitely and the competitively inferior one will be eventually eliminated okay If resources are limited, they will be competing for some resource, right? Uh, food, shelter, light, water, whatever it may be. Either they are competing for the resource or for a mate, whatever may be. That competition will be more strong. Because all resources are limited in such conditions. When limited resources are present, in that condition, they will compete. And the one which is more stronger, that will exist and the other one, inferior one will be eliminated. That is Gauss competitive exclusion principle. Okay. So competitive exclusion principle by Gauss that states that, that two closely related species competing for the same resource that cannot coexist indefinitely. Okay. That cannot exist indefinitely. And the competitively inferior one will be eliminated eventually. Which is the inferior one in competitive way, which is the inferior one which is showing Inferior one, that will be eventually eliminated. That one will be eliminated. Only the stronger one can exist. So for this, first example is Gauss original experiment with ciliate. That is the very good example for this. 
paramecium caudatum and paramecium aurelia these are closely related ciliates these are very closely related ciliate protozoa and when they they are growing in separate cultures they exhibit sigmoid population growth got it when they are growing separately they are exhibiting typical sigmoid population growth but when both protozoans were placed in the same culture that paramecium caudatum and paramecium aurelia both are placed in same culture means paramecium aurelia alone survived after 16 days okay when they kept together in the same culture paramecium aurelia alone survived after 16 days because that had more rapid growth or growth rate and that competed in a stronger way compared to paramecium caudatum for that limited amount of food in that culture right in the culture how it is growing it is absorbing more food so compared to paramecium caudatum paramecium aurelia alone survived after 16 days because that was able to compete with this paramecium caudatum and it was able to absorb more food so it showed a rapid growth compared to paramecium caudatum got it another example another example is introduction of gods resulted in exclusion of abindon tortoise from galapagos islands because goats are better browsers got it so these are the examples first is gross experiment paramecium caudatum and paramecium aurelia in the paramecium aurelia survived after 16 days got it next is competitive exclusion is the first method right competition it is in two forms one is competitive exclusion one will survive and other one there is a exclusion in the second one next is competitive coexistence for that can now recent studies and all it is showing like what species is not completely getting eliminated due to competition that uh, species which is facing that competition that may be evolving or that might evolve that mechanism and that promote the coexistence rather than exclusion got it so rather than exclusion it is getting evolved that species is getting evolved instead of getting eliminated it is getting evolved to promote the coexistence so one uh, such type of mechanism is sharing the resources by choosing different times for feeding or different foraging pattern okay so for that first example is five closely related species of warblers they avoid if they are existing together means they avoid competition what they will do to avoid competition they will change the foraging pattern then due to different feeding habitat this is darwin's findings so darwin found that 14 14 species of finches they existed together or there is a coexistence in galapagos islands due to different feeding habit they developed different feeding habits so 
they were able to exist together or there is a coexistence okay then evidence for uh, this commutation occurrence of this commutation we need some kind of evidence without evidence simply in science we can't give any statement so evidence for commutation or commutative exclusion it is very easy to demonstrate in lab experiments because it is done by uh, goes so the such commutative exclusion that occurring in nature it is not always conclusive so evidence for the occurrence of that commutation in nature that that comes from competition release that means there a dramatical increase in the population of less distributed species in a geographical area and that Uh, when it's a superior competitor, it is removed experimentally from that area. So competition will occur when that resource present in that environment are limited. When there is a limited resources in the environment, there comes the competition. Is it true? we cannot say that when it is a, when this resources are coming in a limited condition only then the competition occurs because then uh, this limiting resources that may not be the reason for that competition see it depends upon the feeding efficiency of one species if one species is having less feeding efficiency or that is getting reduced due to some effect of or the some inhibitory presence of other species that is also a reason for less growth so this is called as interference competition due to the that other species which is getting involved or there is an inhibition in the feeding habit or something like that there is an interference of other species due to that competition is coming so that is called as interference competition so competition is we can define competition it is a process in which fitness of one species that is compared to the other species it is lower so there comes the competition so in general compared uh, that competition compared to carnivores that herbivores and plants they have more competition okay so there comes the competition and next is predation next type of population interaction is predation see just with general examples i am explaining this because it is not so complicated concept it is simple one just the example you need to remember that's all this concept is very simple those who are having less when the resources are limited here we are saying when the resources are limited or the health health wise when there is a less competition or the what is the meaning of that competition fitness it depends upon the fitness if if a species is not fit that also may lead to competition or sometimes resources are less that also lead to competition so in different ways there arises one kind of competition that's what we want to explain with different examples so the concept is very simple here the examples which we are giving that gives a clear idea about the concept the next population interaction is predation so in predation only one species the predator is getting benefited and the interaction is 
detrimental to the other species or to the prey. For prey, there is a negative effect, right? Only the predator is getting benefited. So predation is the natural way of transferring energy which is fixed by plants to higher trophic levels. So for example, here in the case of tiger and deer, tiger is the predator and prey, which is the prey? Deer. See here deer, it is not getting any kind of benefit. At the same time, tiger is getting benefited. So for deer, for the prey, it is a detrimental effect and the predator is getting benefited. Then sparrow and seeds. Here predator is sparrow, prey is seeds. Then animals, herbivorous animals and plants. Here, herbivorous, those animals are getting benefited. But at the same time, the plants, they are not getting any benefit. Here, predators, they are playing very important role in the ecosystem. They are transferring. So what are the roles that predators are playing? They are transferring energy across trophic level. So in different trophic level, they are transferring energy. Which one? These predators. They are transferring energy across trophic levels. Then they keep in population under control. Okay. There indirectly there occurs a population control also. How? Some exotic species, in the case of that exotic species, they become invasive and they spread fast. Why? Because that invaded land that does not have or that don't have its natural predators. See, for example, we can say that the pretty pure cactus that introduced into Australia in 1920s. Okay. That caused have by uh, that got spreaded into million of hectares of rangeland. So this invasive character that got under control by introduction of cactus feeding predator. It's a kind of mode from its natural habitat into the country. Okay, so that's how that brought into control. That cactus was brought under control only after a cactus breeding predator that was a moth from the natural habitat. It is introduced into or that was introduced into the country. Okay, next important role that predator is having that is Biological pest control methods. This is used in agriculture as and they have the ability of that predators to regulate the prey population. So biological pest control method. This is especially this is used in agriculture and they are based on the ability of that predator to regulate prey population. Next important role is maintain species diversity in a community. So this predators. They are helping in maintaining that species diversity in a community. How? By reducing the intensity of competition among competing prey species. We can say an example in the rocky intertidal communities of American Pacific Coast, the starfish. That's an important predator where 
all the starfish they were removed experimentally for this experiment purpose all other starfish they were removed and from that intertidal area more than 10 species of invertebrates they became extinct within that year because of that interspecific competition okay so that starfish in the rocky intertidal communities of american pacific coast the starfish which is an important predator so in a field experiment when all the starfish were removed from the enclosed intertidal area more than 10 species of invertebrates became extinct within a year why why it became extinct because of the interspecific competition okay so there are some facts which is related to this predation prudent predator so predator in nature they are prudent so this existence of this prudent predator it is because of how we can explain that the prudent predator if, if the concept is that if a very efficient predator that over exploiting its prey then that prey might become extinct and what will happen that will result in the extinction of that predator and also due to lack of food also that will become extinct okay means over exploiting that prey means that prey might become extinct due to lack of food also this can happen then evolution of various defenses in prey that is developing development of different adaptations so this prey species they have or they may they may evolve some kind of defenses to minimize the challenges in that predation or the impact of that predation so to minimize that challenges this prey species they may evolve various defense mechanisms in animals chemical defense you can see mimicry then warning colorations chemical defense all these are different methods they are following to minimize the challenges okay so here that monarch butterfly it is highly what that monarch butterfly is doing there is a chemical defense in the case of monarch butterfly so some prey species they are poisonous and they are avoided by this predators so in the case of monarch butterfly it is avoided by the predators like some birds birds are the predators so due to the presence of a special chemical in its body and that chemical which is making highly distasteful okay so this chemical is acquired by monarch butterfly from a poisonous weed during the caterpillar stage that monarch butterfly is getting this chemical okay during the caterpillar stage that monarch butterfly is getting this chemical from a poisonous weed during the caterpillar stage and that makes 
distasteful. Okay, so that is the chemical defense. Then mimicry. That means the resemblance of one organism to another or to uh, some kind of natural objects like where they are living to that objects. So that uh, that gives a kind of protection and that is a kind of advantage and during this mimicry that subject which is known as mimic or uh, which one they are trying to imitate, that object is copied and that is called as the model. Okay. Then warning coloration. That kind of coloration which is helping that animal species to avoid the natural predator. So, uh, chemical defense they are trying, mimicry they are trying, warning colorations they are trying. This and all for what? To protect them from predators. That is the defense. And different kind of chemical substance. These are the different types of defense mechanism to escape from the predators. And next is parasitism. Next population interaction is parasitism. In parasitism, like predation, in parasitism only one species is getting benefited. That parasite is getting benefited and that interaction is detrimental to the other species. That means the host species. Host species is getting a negative effect because it is always absorbing food and nutrients. That parasitism, it is a relation between two organisms. In that, one organism spreads that whole life. Or that body completely giving that body to other organism and that other organism is getting nourishment and shelter from the second one right the first organism which is giving the body or the life that is that is the host and which is getting nourishment from this host that is the parasite so parasitism means One is getting benefited and another one is getting detrimental effect. See many parasites, you know that many parasites are there. They are host specific parasites. That means only a particular group of organism that can work as a host. So both parasite and the host, they will try to co-evolve. If that host is developing a special mechanism for resisting, this parasite, then that parasite also evolves another mechanism. There is a counter mechanism to neutralize this and that can live successfully in the same host. So there are different adaptations. Okay, different adaptations shown by these parasites that may be in lifestyle That parasites, they have evolved uh, different types of a number of special adaptations like loss of unnecessary sense organs, the presence of uh, adhesive organs or suckers for what? To cling, in, uh, cling on to that host. Then loss of digestive system. Then high reproductive capacity. Then their life cycle, complex life cycle that will be involving one or two host or there will be an intermediate host or vectors to uh, facilitate or to provide this uh, parasitism. There will be a primary host or a secondary host. There will be an intermediate host. So in the case of primary host like human liver fluke and on two intermediate hosts there is a snail and a fish to complete the life cycle. 
then malarial parasite you know plasmodium that need a vector mosquito vector to spread to other host so on that host what and all impact this parasite will create that will reduce the survival of the host and growth and reproduction of host that will also may get affected then parasite they will all, they will try to reduce the host population density this parasite will reduce or that may, may become the reason for reducing the host population density then that makes the host physically very weak because it is absorbing nutrients so based on the occurrence this parasites there are different types ectoparasite and endoparasite ectoparasite means they feed on the external surface of the host organism like you know that ticks on dog then cascata cascata on hedge plant so these are all ectoparasite which are uh, feeding on external surface of the host organism another type is endoparasite endoparasite means that live inside the host body at different sites it is living like liver kidney lungs rbc so their life cycle this endoparasite their life cycle will be more complex why because they need extreme specialization to live inside the body so they have simple morphological features or anatomical features that will be very simple but they will be having more adaptation and next type one more type is there amenselism which we have mentioned that is the interaction between two organism in amenselism two organism of different species in which one species that inhibits the growth of the other species how that will secrete some kind of chemicals two organisms will grow or two different species in that one species growth will get inhibited with the secretion of some kind of chemicals so that organism which inhibits the growth of another organism that is called as amenselism which is inhibiting the growth of another one that is called as amenselism and that phenomenon the inhibition of growth of one species by the other species throughout that chemical secretion will be there that is called as allelopatin in plants you can see or antibiotic uh, sorry antibiosis or biological antagonism that like penicillin that is secreted by penicillium and that this penicillin uh, this penicillin secretion that inhibits the growth of large number of bacteria and streptomyces different species of streptomyces and actinomyces that produce wide range of chemicals that inhibits the again this is also inhibiting the growth of bacteria so these are the examples for amenselism one with the help of chemical secretion one is completely stopping the growth of the other organism so that is called as amensel which is stopping the or inhibiting the growth of other organism that organism is called as amensel and that phenomenon growth inhibiting phenomenon that is called as allelopathy or antibiosis or biological antagonism the penicillin secretion which is inhibiting the growth of other bacteria that is an example for this okay so these are different types of population interaction you have to learn with example for each one okay so hope you have got an idea about this chapter So in this chapter, 
if you have any doubt you want me to repeat anything organism and population this is the last part population interaction hope it's clear the different types of interaction you have to learn definition of each one with the help of one or two examples okay in each one which one is getting benefited either it is getting benefited or not or both are getting benefited or one is getting benefit beneficial effect and another one is having harmful effect like that you have to learn with the help of example got it hope it's clear you have any doubt okay if you have any doubt you can ask me in the next class that's all in the next class we'll be starting the new chapter thank you